السلام عليكم ورحمه الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حكيم مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh again. Uh, I was uh, asked to give a khutbah, and um, I always believe that a khutbah should be in touch with what we're living around. Um, and nobody can ignore the light of the circumstances and the events all going on in the world right now. Uh, it's a pressing issue. Um, we've been hearing about. Uh, less than what's happening in Palestine for the past couple of months. And I'm sure lots of imams came up here and, and spoke about certain topics. I'm here to, I'd like to share just five messages, five personal messages that resonated with me, um, and just to share it with everyone. Um, these messages, I've, I've seen people asking one way or another about questions and expressing concerns about what's happening. And I'm here today to share five messages. Let's, let's, let's begin. <clears throat> first, I see that the, the first message for me is The decree of Allah is good. The decree and the will of Allah is good. Even if you see suffering, even if it hurts you, You'll see people around you asking about what's happening in Gaza. Why is this happening in Palestine? Why are the Muslims being suffered, being prosecuted? Why is this? Why would Allah do this? I hope that's the minority of people that's asking this because as Muslims, we do not have that problem of evil in our creed, in our aqidah. We do not have the problem of evil. We don't stand and say, "Why would a loving God allow?" bad things to happen. We as Muslims know that qadr, I mean, this is part of our creed, part of our man, that qadr Allah khayr, the degree of Allah, it's good. It is good. The fact that you don't know, you understand why it's happening. Why are the people of Gaza suffering this? Why are the people of Palestine suffering this? And we do not want to forget people all around the world. There's Muslims in Congo. There's Muslims in Sudan. In Sudan, just this past week, People, hundreds of people in Sudan were prosecuted and killed. It's not only this, but of course, our biggest and the most important thing right now is what's happening from the occupation of Gaza. And to, to be able to understand this a little bit more, we have to contemplate the Quran a little bit more. With the ayah of the Surah al Gap, and I hope we're all reading it, Surah al Gap every Friday. So if you haven't read it, you need to read it after the Surah. After the Sukhah uh, Juma. Um, say, say, O Muhammad, if the sea is the ink to the words of God, to the wisdom of God, the seas will perish, the seas will disappear before the wisdom and the words of God will be over. They're infinite. We as Muslims believe that the wisdom of God is infinite. There's several, there's several ayahs in the Quran. There's the ayah, um, if all the trees on earth have been converted into parents, and all the seas seven times have been converted into ink, you will still, they will, they will disappear before the words of Allah disappear. The words and the wisdom of Allah is infinite, whether you know it or not. So it's very important that la illa ma rabbana. We do not utter, we do not say except what pleases Allah. So words by why is this happening? Why is Allah allowing this? Should not come from Muslims. Remember, we have to understand that Allah is al-Hakim, right? Allah is al-Rahim. Allah is, is, is the Ali, Allah is the all wise. This, when we look at events happening around us, we have to look at through the, through the, through the spectacles of Allah is the all wise, Allah is the all knowing, and Allah is the all merciful. Do not forget that. Who knows? Who knows why 
why does this happen? Why this is happening? Maybe this is maybe on the day of judgment we will look at the people of Gaza and we will envy them. We wish we would, we would look at their status on Yom Kippur and we would say, "Oh, I wish I was with them." Look at their status. Maybe this is maybe this is a beginning of a big change to the Muslims all about the world. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is a wake up call. There's a lot of people that just this was a shame. This was a wake up call. Look at the Muslims. What's happening? Who knows? The degree of Allah is good, even if you see suffering. And remember the Prophet of Muhammad, we've seen these prophetic messages. When, when parents are holding their, their, their kids in the Gaza, their newborns, and they're saying, Alhamdulillah. Right? And we remember that the Prophet did the exact same thing. He was tribulated, he suffered tribulation similar to them. He carried his own newborn, Ibrahim, like he said. In the light of that, in the light of that, man, the eye will shed tears. The heart will, uh, in the light of and the heart will be saddened. Whatever we do, we will be able to open, and we will not say except what pleases Allah. What you guys will not say, and we are really saddened to your depart, Ibrahim. So remember, you may dislike something, you will have suffering, of course. We are all sad and we all shed tears when we saw those images. Well, our hearts were, were, were melted. Our hearts broke right every time we see those videos. But this is this should not trigger a, a, a reaction towards God where he's saying, Why God? Why are you doing this? This is not because we know that this is good. What is happening? Ultimately, it's good. Whether it's in this world or the hereafter. Remember, have faith in Allah and Allah's decree as, as, as His decree is always good. This was my first message. I don't want to be conscious for the time. Right, the second message is, we belong to one Ummah. Look at the Ummah. Look at what happened. With 1.8 billion Muslims roared on social media, roared in the streets of the major metropolitan cities, we are one Ummah. Do not tell me this Ummah is dead. Do not tell me this Ummah is done. We are still alive. We still have a strong beating heart. When Lincoln left Washington, he went to Netanyahu. And he was supposed to come back to Washington, but Lincoln went back to the Arab world leaders to, with one message. Silence the people. The top the top politicians are trying to silence every single one of you. Your reposting, retweeting on social media is making them buckle in their seats. So keep, we'll talk about what to do now. But I'm saying, this, look at every, look at the new generation, look at the kids. Who can, everyone now knows about the Aqsa. Our kids, my kids are experts in the Palestinian uh, Arab conflict. They know exactly what happened, all the way from the Canaanian. They know the story of this land. This was a great opportunity for us to educate everyone. This Ummah is not dead. This Ummah is not dead. We're still beating. We're still alive. So it's important. The Prophet says, Good is in me and in my Ummah to the day of judgment. We have to believe this. It is very important. This is one message I really want to strong. They are trying, they know this. Our enemies know this. They are spending millions, if not billions, of dollars to silence every single one of you. It is not a secret. The money is being spent. And the Quran said they will do this, and they are do doing this. In the Ladina Kafaru. Those who disbelieve will spend their, this is in the Quran, will spend their money to walk the way of Allah. They will spend it. These millions of dollars will be spent. And then it will be a regret on them. And then they will be defeated. Do we believe in the Quran? This is what Ummah. Ben-Gurion said, the old will die. ben Gurion, when they founded Israel back in 48, they said, the old will die, and the young will forget. The old did die, but did the young forget? 
Get the young generations. Now, almost 80 years after that, 70 plus years, did we forget? We, most of us were not born by 1948. We are still roaring for the core Philistine. We will not forget. So remember, we belong in one home. And this is my second message. My third message is the upside self. I actually had the, 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 the blessing and, and the name of Allah to visit the Aqsa, Masjid al Aqsa. When you look at the Masjid al Aqsa, it is the thermometer, and listen to what I'm saying carefully. It is the thermometer of faith on earth. If you're an alien and you want to know how is faith on the planet Earth, look at the Masjid al Aqsa. Either who's taking care of it, or how are the believers attached to it? If it's a forgotten, there are periods where the Aqsa was forgotten by the believers on this earth. The faith on earth is little. But if you see that the believers are taking care of Al-Aqsa, or the believers are strongly attached to the Masjid Al-Aqsa, faith is good. Remember, it's in the Quran. We have to understand our connection to the Masjid Al-Aqsa. Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi abdihi ilayna min al-Masjid al-Harabi ila al-Masjid al-Aqsa alladhi barakna hawla. So, God, when He describes the Al-Aqsa, He says that we have blessed around it. The Masjid Al-Aqsa is blessed. This is in our creed. The, what, what, is, what is the main message of an Isra? Like, what's the main objective of the Isra and Mi'raj trip? Right? When you ask anyone, it is to meet Allah, or the Prophet وسلم, to meet the Creator, to meet Allah. That was the main objective. He didn't go direct from that. It was there so that he could meet Allah to see Allah and prescribe the, 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 the Salah to be prescribed. He had to stop at the Masjid al Aqsa first. Imagine the most spectacular view. Every, the Prophet arrives there. Every single Prophet from Adam to Isa is waiting for him. There, physically, not spiritually, they're not some transparent ghosts. They are there physically. For those of you who have the honor to visit the Masjid al Aqsa, every step is a foot. You're literally in a footstep of one of the Prophets. Every time you make sujood on any, on any place on that plateau, not only the Hukbat the Sakhra and the Musallah of Dibi, anywhere on that plateau is where a prophet had his head. So remember this. This is the most spectacular. Now the prophet stands with them. And he's standing beside heavyweight prophets, Ibrahim, the Khalil, the, the, Allah befriended Sayyidina Ibrahim, Musa, the one who spoke to Sayyidina Ibrahim. And then to them, they spoke still to Allah. You have Nuh, you have Sulaiman, you have Dawood, Isa, everyone, Ilyas, the Salih, everyone is there. And the Prophet stands. And Jibreel comes. Who is, the, who is he going to ask to be the Imam? And he asks our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to get up and be the Imam. This is our land. This is our, this is sacred to us. It is your prophet that was the imam of all the prophets over there on this land, on that land over there. In the Sunnah, we know that Allah Amma Rajul Ki Sultani, right? When you go, when I visit you at your house, I don't be the imam. And we know that if you visit me in my house, I will be the imam if I visit you. Every man should be the imam in his house. So it is a very strong significance that it was the prophet. That was the that is like the prophets are giving our own, our prophet, the banner of taking care of this sacred land. Right? So the Masjid of Aqsa is extremely important. Your love is part of the creed, it's not just the political, but your love and your attachment to the Masjid of Aqsa is a measure of how, is, it was one of the measures of your Iman. It's one of the measures of your Iman. That's my third message. My fourth message, for those who are depressed, and I have to make it uh, quick. For those who are depressed and dying, I, I, and I see that every now and then, um, look at look at the, the, the Muslims after the after the, the, the battle of Uhud. They're defeated. They're broken. Uh, Abu Bakr was just martyred. Abu Bakr was just martyred. Uh, Ammar ibn Yasin, uh, sorry, uh, Musa ibn Umayyad was just murdered. And of course, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, right? The, the beloved Hamza to Sayyidina Muhammad to the Prophet was just murdered and mutilated. And they, the, 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 the Sahaba, the companions, would hear uh, the Prophet cry audibly. 
he literally hear him cry over Hamza. And when the Quran comes and says, Waladahim, don't be weak, don't 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 be sad. Right? Look, look at look at the message from the Quran. It's like a tender. You know when your when your your child gets into a fight or gets injured, you tell them, don't worry, don't don't be sad. Look at the look at the Quran. Waladahim, waladahim. When to you are better. You are better. You are higher. In good to mu'minin with a condition of iman. In the excess of heart, if you're hurt, in the excess of heart, but by the best of all the heart, they're hurt as well. And we know they're hurt, they're hurt bad. It was that we're hurt, but they're hurt really bad, right? What's he going to do that we don't want to make that next? Remember, look at history. Look at history. It's, it's not empires come and go and fall. So, this cycle is one of the sunnah of Allah. They'll rise, they'll be right. The empires will rise and they will fall. So that Allah, why is this, why is this cycle come? The ebb and flow of victory and then struggles and then victory. It's not going to be heaven. This, this is not where this devote is. Right? What is Allah Allah is to see who is your true believer? Who's going to be steadfast on his iman and his faith, whether it's good times or tough times? What is definitely going to be showing that? And to take martyrs from him. Remember the first message, the hikmah of Allah. He it is a test, and he wants to take martyrs from us. Right? Those thousands of people in Gaza, and I said, well, and they all might accept them among, among the Shahada, inshallah. All right? They pass the test. They finish the test quickly. They're happy now. All right? Yes, we hurt because we're one body. We are one body. We will hurt. We will cry. It's, it's one body. The, the Prophet said the Muslims, the movement, the Muslims and the movements and believers are one body. If one is suffering, the other, the rest of the body is suffering. And we've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen that we're all suffering. Right? So, just don't, don't, don't despair. This, this is one of the sunnahs of Allah. It's, it's a very, uh, the rest of the ayah. Well, you might follow the dinner and anyway, I'm not going to be I'm dead. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sitting with the Lord of Jannah. Or do you think you're going to just enter paradise and going to like slide through earth without, without trials and tribulation? All right. When I'm a man, 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 with you, who were from jihad, true jihad, and who had patience through this. The, the, the price of a jannah is is, um, is not cheap. So for those who doubt a lot, three things that you can think of to, to help you with that. Number one, life's short. And it's not that life's short, YOLO, life's short. It's life, this life is short. Right? The Prophet said this life is just I'm passing the desert, there's a tree, I rest a little bit, and I go. Then we have to look at this life. This is not the end all, right? Our time here is limited. There are tests, but we, our eyes are not in this world. All right? Life is short. It does not weigh even a wing of a mosquito in the eyes of the sight of Allah. This life is really short. So no depression, all right? It's going to be good. Whether you, whether you see that good or not, it is going to be good. And we do not need to Remember, I said, we're taking a young one that we are living in this. And these are the days, and we cycle those days between people. Some people will be strong, and then you'll weaken, and you'll be strong again, and you'll be weak, and empires will grow, and they will fall. These are, it's, it's cycle. We, at some point, the Muslims were the strongest nation on earth. The more advanced civilization on earth. It started really weak with one person, Rasulullah, the Prophet. Okay. <clears throat> Number three, we believe that we will be victorious, whether we see it or not. You, you, we will promise that this Ummah in this world will be victorious at the end. You may die before seeing it, the people of Gaza die before seeing it. But you have to understand, number one, life is short. It's not the end all. 
Number two, it's not fixed, it's a cycle. And number three, we were promised victory by Allah. All right? Now, sort of at, at that point, sort of Buruj, remember in Mecca, and I, I will end the first part of the book with this. In, in, in Mecca, the Surah of Buruj is one of the Mecca surahs. It's, it's a short surah. And it was revealed when the Prophet was helpless. We all feel help, helpless. He first few people just believed in him, supported him, and this is Sumaya, the first martyr of Islam, being mur murdered in public in a very, very brutal way. Being shoved a spear into her private parts. This is how Sumaya, our first martyr, died. And he was a Salah and or the family of Sayyid yes, just Salah. Uh, in the mind of the uh, the just patience. Your 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 appointment with me is is is, is in paradise. The 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 surah uh, the guru has and in this in this time the surah the guru is revealed and it talks about three people three nations that had the same beginning but the end of the story with all three nations was very different. The timing of the surah could not be more perfect. Number one, it starts with Ashabu Uqdud, those people of the trench. And then it goes, um, uh, the Firamak with the people of Moses, Pharaoh and Moses, and Khomsal, uh, right? The moon. So these are the three people that the Surah talks about. The first is those people who believed and they were prosecuted. The, the, the prosecutors dug a trench, they filled the trench with fire, and they were all burned. End of story. They did not see success. That's it. There's no intervention, nothing. They believe they were killed. The second people are the Abu Musa. And you can see now the prosecution keeps on going on and on and on. So not only they, they were believed, but the prosecution kept on going and on and on and on and on until. There was a meeting point where uh, uh, Pharaoh and Moses were at the, at the sea, and the sea opens, the children of Israel pass, and then uh, Moses, um, uh, Pharaoh, and the, uh, Pharaoh and his army um, uh, perish with the divine intervention of God. All right, so you can see there was a struggle for years, and then a divine intervention. And then Kabul saw that was just divine intervention. God just intervened, killed Kabul saw that. And the believers went away. There was no um, uh, conflict. Right? It is. It's important. This message, the surah, is telling you that the the end, the victory. We believe the victory is coming, but it's coming to come at the time and in the way that Allah desires. It's not up to us to say victory has to come now by this way, or then, or by that time. We may see the victory, we may not see the victory. Victory may not come, but it's not. We have some black tidings that we are not going to be like the Ashab of Udu. Because the Prophet said, the victory will be, we will have victory in this world. How and when? We don't know. And we have to submit that this is for the, um, uh, is determined by Allah. And then the end, the sort of the Buruj is, is really good. And it ends with, Inna Matshara Pitash. The wrath of Allah is really strong. Inna Huwa Yudhuwa. He starts and he ends. Wa Huwa 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 so it is very important to look at what's happening around us through that lens. Alright, please uh, don't forget to pass the boxes for donations. The message, please uh, support the message.
All right, I like to make my thumbnails a little bit practical. So, what should we do? Focusing on practical points is the best way. There's a lot of people that tell you do this, do that, and do this, and let's do this, and let's do that. Focus. And I'm going to suggest, this is my suggestion, on four things that we have to do. Four very precise things. Every single one of us, you do it. That's our role. Because you don't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your response was, I was watching. I saw it all. And when you were asked, what did you do? Nothing. The, the people of Philistine will be victorious. It, they will be victorious. But when that victory happens, there will be two columns. Which column? Are you going to be the ones who are watching them? Or did something? And the question is, what should we do? First thing, do not stop talking about the Naqsa. Do not stop talking about the Naqsa. Do not stop talking about the Philistine. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Talk to your co-workers. Talk to everyone around you. Educate people about Philistine. The lawyer thinks we, the, the new generation, thought the new generation will not remember Philistine. We are here to let, hope he's turning in his grave, to make sure that he was wrong. Talk to everyone, every single, every Jew knows about the rest of the laws and knows about Zionism really well. You ask the majority of them. The vast majority of Jews knows about the Zionist product. Our role is to educate our children, our friends, our communities about the message of Allah. This is not an option anymore. And I'm not an imam or a mufti, but I think it, it can be followed at this point. If you are ignorant of Al-Aqsa, or what is happening, or the, the, the relevance of that land to us, to you as a as a Muslim, you may be committing a sin. Right? Talk. You are an ambassador of an Aqsa. <laughs> Number two, so first thing we're going to talk. Let everyone know, do not stop talking. Number two, share. Share everything on social media. This is, people at the highest levels are spending millions, so you are silent. As I said earlier, the Secretary of State went and toured the Arab world so that the leaders would silence people. All they can do is silence people in the streets. We have a responsibility. We can go in the streets and we can go on social media. If there is a, if there is a demonstration, you need to show up. You need to show up. Say, just make the idea that I am going to go there with a Nawab and I am going to make the Muslims appear, make the Muslims appear big. And with every step, with every shout, that you, that, you, that you say, you don't have a hassan. But more easier than that, we don't have to protest every day, every day, but you have your social media, and that is actually scaring the most. There, this is what's scaring our enemies most. Your presence, on, so I have been off social media since about 15 years ago. I put social media, I don't believe in it. But when my recreator created a new Twitter account, X account, just to post and, and, and uh, repost. Every, my entire feed now is nothing but nothing. You're, you're forcing the algorithms to let people know. 80% of the content, of the Palestinian content on the internet is pro-Palestine, is pro-Palestine. Less than 10% is pro-Israel. 80% is you. Don't lose steam. Keep up. Share. A lot. Number three, spend. But he, you just, he's doing that to him. Why well, I'm pushing him? The jihad is first with money and then with your soul, with yourselves, with your minds. First, spend. So how do we spend? You have a lot of relief organizations. There's a lot of people of us that need every penny. Put a dollar so that you're written in the, in the column where, put a dollar. Really, if you cannot, just put a dollar. 
So that at least you can say in front of Allah Yom Qiyamah, I spent something. I am with that group. Even if I'm just the lowest one in that group, I do not want to be in the group that just witness people. And just watch people be massacred. There are people giving their lives up there. The least we can do is just help, help with money. First thing, we're going to not stop, we were not going to stop talking about money. Number two, we're going to share on social media a lot. Number three, spend. Spend money for that. Number four is the God. The Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did not give up dua ever. Whether he was victorious or when he was behind the hunt. Dua is always there. Remember at the end of the day, things happen because of the dua, because of Allah. Allah will allow things to And Allah will change things because of the dua. There are people amongst us that if they ask Allah, Allah will grant them. Do not. Sometimes Allah delays the response just because He likes to hear us say Ya Allah. So do not forget the dua. I know we're, we're, we're doing our dua all the time because we all have problems, right? Financial problems, health problems, children problems, family problems, every we have problems. This is this is the abode of trials and tribulation. Just do not forget them. So that these are my messages for my five messages that I have for, for everyone here. A poor Bobby had a list of Allah for you, Mina and Mubinet, what was Mina and was Mubinet, and I hear you know what I'm wet, Fain the Gal, Ben Asanino, and Kari, and Jim and Dawet. Oh Allah, give victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Oh Allah, give victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Oh Allah, we we are here and we're, we're saying that we are not going to stop talking about Palestine, so help us, Ya Allah. We will not stop talking about Al Aqsa, so help us, Ya Allah. We have taken an oath that we will continue educating and talking about Al Aqsa, Ya Allah, so help us, Ya Allah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويؤتى ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله عليه العظيم يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم. Couple of announcements. Uh, Brother Muhammad Zari uh, uh, passed away on Thursday. Uh, please make dua for him. Uh, I have um, uh, a brother here that his mother passed away. Uh, also, please, please make dua for her. A few announcements uh, from uh, Saddam. Um, there will be no Friday night program tonight. Uh, they're taking uh, a short break. Resume their program on Friday, January 5th. Um, we get school, the spring semester. The registration is not open for the 2024 spring semester. The semester will start on January 7th. Uh, learn more and register at the uh, website at salamcenter.org. Um, Salam Nikra School is open. There's a Quran memorization program for all ages. The year round program is every Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7. Please feel free to drop by and have a trial class with them. Um, and as, as always, at the end of your donation, it's very important that we support the message to make the doors, keep the doors open. Uh, we encourage you to consider Salam for your uh, charitable giving. To the nations who set out are tax deductible. It's offering a way to make a difference and receive a tax break. Um, the, please make a uh, dua for. Uh, just see, I have a couple more. All right. Um, so we'd like to request the community to join us for making dua uh, for the well-being of the family of the Aisha Israeli. May Allah grant them peace, joy, and prosperity. Um, but also, uh, my friend, my personal friend, uh, Henry Ibrahim Ghazi, his father just passed away a few hours ago in Egypt. Um, so please remember him and his dua. May Allah grant him a further scout. Amen. Well, I'm sorry.